Hello friends, welcome to my next tutorial on data wrangling tutorial series. The ultimate guide to data wrangling with Python using Rust Polish data frame to work with finance and supply chain data analytics. So far in the previous four videos we have seen how to use polar select context with polar columns. We also learned about polar expression. In today and the follow up videos we are going to do a deep dive into polar data expressions. Specifically in today's video, we are going to work through string, list, arrays and struct with Polish data frame. I want to call out that you will find link to source code in video description below. And you can reach out to me at GitHub, Twitter and YouTube. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel for more videos. As I mentioned earlier in this notebook, we will focus on using Polar's expression to work with string, list, arrays and struct data types. Now first thing in this notebook, let's import Polar's SPL. Now if you recall, this is the Jupyter notebook from previous session. And we did create a lot of supply chain data model like product category, product orders, customers, etc. You'll find link to previous video in video description below. But just in case, if you want to learn how to create these data frames, we are going to fast forward. But just to recap, as you can see, we are creating a product category data frame where, with these fields like ID, as update, description, region, etc. Similarly, we are going to create another data frame product. Now, as you can see, product has the same fields, but it is one extra field category. Now, this category fields refers to the product category we created earlier. So again, please watch previous videos just in case if you want to learn how to create these data frames. So here as you, we are creating more and more samples, let's go create one more sample, say customer database. As you can see, customer data frame has these fields, uh, ID as of date, description, address. Again, these are synthetic data and you can please, you know, um, create as much data as you want with, with the fields you want. All right. So let's go create this customer data frame here. So now we have created product category, product and customer. In this section, we are going to only focus on customer data frame. So as you can see, one thing to call out, Polar stores a string as UTF-8 strings. And all of the functions like method and functions to process or transform string data types is available in the str namespace. So you will see in a minute, what do I mean by that? So let's go print out a couple of the sample from the customer data frame, what we have created. So customer.sample, as you can see, I'm printing five rows here. All right, so as you can see, most of the fields like description, address, email, um, and uh, you know, those type of fields are specifically our str types. So let's go print out, you know, um, select couple of the fields here, which we are going to manipulate. So for example, customer.select, and we are going to select all of the fields here, uh, which is already displaying. And now let's go, for example, take the first field, say description. Now, if, suppose we want to apply some data transformation, string data transformation um, methods on this uh, on this particular column. So that's what I meant by str namespace. So we choose the column, say column description, dot str, and dot, dot length. So once you are inside that str namespace, you can call it string specific methods within that namespace. So once you run this, you will again, it will make more sense to you. Let's take another methods, another column, say address and uh, apply another uh, method, say and uh, underscore cars, charts method here. So again, if you read the signature of that particular method here, you will see what that an underscore charge does. All it does, it calculates the number of the characters and prints it out. So again, you have to call, you know, select the column first, followed by dot str namespace, and then you call methods on that particular column. So let's go run this. So as you can see, we have created two different, so we have called the str namespace methods on two different columns, a description and status. And as you can see, those are just printing the byte count and number of characters. So again, if you read the signature of the str namespace, you will find tons and tons of different methods which you can apply on the string, uh, string uh, data types. Likewise, let's see some more example in str namespace. So for example, let's say start with select a couple of columns and here we, I'm not going to print all the columns here. So let's just comment out the pl.all and let's include the address column here. So we are going to retain original column address and let's create a copy of that. So pl.call address and here I'm going to call the str namespace functions on that. So for example, you want to know if that particular column address, if, if a row in that particular address column address contains certain fields, certain, uh, certain characters. So for example, ADD, or you can use a pipe character to say RESS. So if it contains uh, that particular, those particular values is going to print true and false. Similarly, you can, you know, use the same contents method here. And here you can pass the literal value here. So e either you can pass the regex, so you can use the you know, literal values here, or simply you can call different methods, say it starts with or ends with. 
So let's run this. So what is going to do again is going to you know apply those simple expression methods on that particular column. So as you can see, it displays the whether that particular you know row contains that those characters or not. So it's going to return true or false. All right, let's look at some other examples. So for example, if you are working with a pattern, so most of the time in some examples you have seen, suppose you are working with a URL string and you want to fetch, you want to identify a pattern and you want to get some values out of that. So for example, in this case, as you can see, vote.com and it passes some values to the candidate. So candidate equals to Messi, Ronaldo, suppose you want to fetch only those values here, say Messi or Ronaldo. So how to work on this type of strings? And so what you can do, again, you can select that particular column using polar expression here for first let me just run this okay out.df.select and here i'm going to you know pl.call let's select that column column equals to a now here call the str name is space dot extract and inside that extract you can pass the regex value here so that's what r stands for so you know pass the uh, raw value here so here and you can see candidate equals to and the, the value right next to candidate equals to, that's what you want to fetch. So you can pass the regex value inside that and you can pass the group index and it's going to, what it's going to do is going to extract that particular pattern. So as you can see, simply it, you know, these methods are very, you know, handy and useful if you want to extract certain patterns from a long, long, long data strings here. Similarly, let's take another example. So for example, if you're working with the addresses, so as you can see, addresses mostly contains the street number followed by the street name, etc, etc, et So for example, similarly in our customer database, if you remember, we had that field called address and addresses have, uh, and you, suppose you only want to get the numbers, the street number from that particular addresses field. So you can use the extract all and simply pass that regex value here to extract the numbers and it's going to extract particular street numbers. All right, let me run this again. So customer.select, extract all. Let me run this. So as you can see, it's going to print a street number here. Now, if you go back to our original, as you can see, address one, address two, address three. So what we wanted to do, we want to extract the street numbers from that address column fields. So that's how you achieve that. Let's look at one more example in the str name space. So what if you want to replace certain values here? So for example, in this data frame, id equals to one, two, three, and you have one, two, three, abc in a small cases, and you want to put upper cases. So let's go back to our original customer data frame here. So as you can see in customer data frame, we had the addresses and those were like, you know, camel cases. So what if you want to put everything in upper cases? So here I'm going to show that customer.with column. So it's going to generate the new columns here and str.replace. So whatever the value, you know, you, so you wrap what replaced it, it does is searches for the certain values and it replaces those values once found so i'm going to replace all the small the camel case addresses to all the caps let's say uh, caps case addresses values here simply just use the replace uh, method on that str name space and it's going to get that done all right so that's i think that's uh, pretty much it from the you know um, from the string name space perspective now let me run this again and let's go move on to another topic this section, let's learn about Polar's list data type. I want to call out that Polar's list is entirely different than Python list data type. These are two different things. Let's say you're working with a table where a lot of values are clubbed all together, combined all together and stored inside one feed. So in this case, you want to create a list out of that. So for example, as you can see, a customer has multiple addresses or multiple phone numbers or multiple emails. Suppose you want to create a list out of that. So in this case, we are going to use the Polar's list manipulation method. So again, we are going to uh, recall our customer data frame where we created earlier, customer.select. And here, as you can see, I'm going to, you know, um, take one field, say phone one. And for example, as you can see, phone one, what is phone one? Phone one is a list of all the integer values. So what we want to do, we want to create a list out of that. So we are, first we are going to convert that to UTF string, and then we are going to store it. Later you will see how we're going to explode that into different, uh, into a list. So similarly, phone two, as you can see, phone two is one giant string, but it's separated by a pipe delimited um, value here. So we are going to call the str name space, str that is split, and we are going to split it by the pipe delimited limited phone three as you can see is a list of different string values so you use different method depending on the data type or depending on the values stored in that particular field so three different example phone one phone two phone three as you can see but we are going to unify that and create a unique list of string values and then so you will see like why i created like this so as you can see phone one it has a list of all the strings list two phone two has a similar thing phone three has a similar thing now 
we can use a list method called explode what explode does it takes the values all the string values inside of the list and it uh, inside and the giant string and it's going to create a list out of that so let's go similarly so as you can see phone one initially it has a list of all the integer but now it has a list of all the string so what we can do we can just explode it simply just call the function the dot explode and you will see what it does is going to explode it going to extract or it's going to list out all the individual values from that particular column so that's how you create the list from one particular column or like you know a bunch of strings which are clubbed together so similarly there are other columns as well um, other values as well other methods as well so depending on your data type or data requirement will please feel free to pick um, the methods or like you know whatever you want to do all right so let's take one more example here as you can see so phone 3 and uh, I, you can create another, so what I'm basically showing you here, once you explode the values, you have created the list, then you can, again, because the way polar expression works, you can serialize that expression one after another. So suppose you want to call some other method, list method, say head three, show me the top three values, slice three or length three. You can just, uh, you know, cascade everything all together. You can pipe it or you can chain it all together and call the one method after another. Let's work on another column. So for example, in our um, customer data frame, we have a column called email. As you can see in email column, so for example, there are five good emails and there's one bad email. So in this case, you want to say, okay, how many emails are bad emails? So in this case, what you can do very simply, you can use the same methods here. So here, as you can see, I'm going to call the customer data frame here. And when it says the column dot email, I'm going to call the str namespace, split it, create a list. And then simply I'm going to apply another str method saying, okay, filter all of those emails where email says do not reply. So as you can see, very simply what it does, it's uh, you can cascade the, you can change the methods one after another, all right? Just like list data type, Polar has another newer kind of data type called array. So the only difference between list and array, as you might have guessed, that array, you have to have the same number of elements per row. While what happens in um, uh, what happens in a list, you can have the variable number of elements. So as you can see in this example, so in this array dot underscore dot df data frame, there are two columns called array one and array two. Array one has two data elements, but it's, it's unified across that column. So every column, every row in that particular column has two data elements in array two. Every row in that particular array two column has three different data elements. So that's the only difference between um, array and list. And here, one more thing to call out, it has its own name data space. So for example, you have seen dot str dot list. Here, dot arr, its own naming space where you can call the methods, the array specific methods. So now let's go talk about struct. A struct data type is totally different concepts. Don't get confused. Don't mix it up with list and arrays. However, what it does, a struct data type allows you to work with multiple columns without actually copying the actual data. So once you see that, let's see that in example, it will make more sense to you. So let's take an example. So as you, you know, I'm going to create a new fake data frame called balance sheet. So for example, in this balance sheet, you have a couple of data elements saying physical year, accounting period, all, you know, all that. So for example, you want to know, okay, what are the different for in this physical year, how many rows are out there? So simply what you can do, you can call the value underscore counts method on that particular column, on physical year column. So as you can see, balance sheet is a data frame and I'm calling a method saying balance sheet dot select and select that physical year column and call the method save dot value counts and sort it by, you know, of course the physical year. And then once you have sorted it out, you can unnest it. So you're working with multiple columns and then you can explode it. Explode is not the right word, but you can unnest it by that particular column what you have selected. So as you can see earlier, we are, we are getting the tuples of physical year by accounts and here you just unnest it. Now simply, uh, so one practical use of this particular struct data type is suppose you want to know if the, you want to find the duplicated values here. So it makes it very, very easy if especially working, when you're working with the giant data sets, you can call this kind of methods here. So another example, say for example, you want to create the rank functions. So uh, again, the, the idea is if you want to have some kind of data type, which lets you work on the multiple data, multiple columns all add together, struct is the data type you want to use. So for example, is duplicator, or you want to call a rank function, or you want to create a maximize or some, you know, any kind of statistical information you want to pull out, you should be using the struct data type. So that's all I wanted to share in this video today. I hope you find it useful. Thank you.